Ladies and gentlemen, how are we doing all? This is Jimmy. We have here a special guest. We have here Brian from Sentiment. If you don't know what Sentiment is and who Brian is, you have been sleeping under a rock for a long, long time. And I would be more than happy to wake you up. Hi, Brian. Uh, how are we doing today? Great to see you, Jimmy. Doing quite well. It's uh, countdown time to the having in just over six hours. Yeah, it's really exciting. Huh? So how many blocks uh, remaining? 38, 39 the last time I checked? Um, I'm looking right now. I'll share my screen in a moment. But uh, the the timer from Nice Hash is showing we are at uh, 588 block time. Uh, it's not showing the actual amount, but I know that we're getting – we're under 40 for sure. It might be under 30 at this point. Yeah, yeah. The, the few minutes I checked, uh, like the last few minutes I checked, it was in, in the like uh, 39, so it should be now 37, almost. Yeah, you're, almost. you're spot on, actually. It was actually It is 38, according to watcher.com. Uh, 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 yeah, I, I have a mental clock in this brain that keeps yeah, you counting do. blocks. You just <laughs> I'm mining the, the next block is hitting. <laughs> I'm mining the, the blocks in my mind. Hey, uh, Brian, uh, you know, uh, the halving is a big event for Bitcoin, uh, for sure. Um, in a few hours, we're going to witness the fourth, uh, you know, halving event ever in this uh, in this space, in, in, a, in the crypto, uh, in a Bitcoin ecosystem. Um, so what's actually, you know, I, I know like sentiment, you know, uh, tracks sentiment. So that's what it's actually in the name, right? and also like a lot of on-chain activities. Um, so I'm really curious, uh, Brian, if you could tell us something about this shift you guys have seen uh, in, in this space, uh, you know, um, since, uh, you know, the halving is becoming, you know, a more uh, a bigger narrative. Yeah, there's been uh, some major sentiment shifts that have gone on, particularly since, you know, late February when we were going in that, direction of euphoria leading up to the March 14th or 13th, uh, depending on what location are, you're in in the world, the all-time high that hit at that point really was right around the peak euphoria as it usually is when we see all-time highs, um, followed by a, a pretty mammoth correction that saw Bitcoin go down eventually to below 60K just a couple days ago. And now, of course, it's bouncing once again. So Sentiment has been all over the place <clears throat> with lots of people uh, drastically changing their opinions on whether we're in a bull market versus a bear market. As you know, everyone kind of has an arbitrary definition of what those terms mean. Mm -hmm. So um, in short, over the past two weeks, there's been a noticeable shift uh, to you know, people being bearish, people shorting more, uh, and people generally deciding that the top is in and you've got to get out now if you like saving your money. So that's mm -hmm. been kind of the, the trend that we've been on, which is typically a good sign if you like seeing markets go up. You want to see the crowd uh, not believing the, the hype and, and not believing that we can go any higher than we already have. Yeah, definitely. Me as a trading psychologist and as a uh, master NFP coach, I, I, uh, I'm i actually by nature a uh, reversal trader. I, I like to open positions when nobody wants to open positions right. uh, because like just a few days ago, a lot of biases, they, you know, they kick in and they stack up actually. Uh, you know, biases like uh, recency bias, confirmation mm -hmm. bias, uh, negativity bias. We people, we basically... Uh, give more weight to negative emotions, way more than positive emotions. I do believe that this, um, you know, the, the market environment is really different from the first, uh, the second halving for sure, uh, because like we we have now like different market, you know, uh, participants, uh, you know, uh, clients of BlackRock, Fidelity, Fanec, and so forth and so on. You know, they they also entered this space. I was actually kind of surprised that Bitcoin made an all-time high prior to the halving. This is, you know, pretty unique event. I know we, we don't have a lot of data points. This is going to be like the fourth um, halving event uh, ever. Uh, what's your opinion about that? Do, do you, uh, from, from an analytical uh, 
perspective, do you give that any weight? Uh, Bitcoin making a new all-time high prior to the halving event? Yeah, I really wasn't surprised, to be honest. I mean, it's always shocking to see prices hit numbers never seen before. But I did mm -hmm. have a feeling around the beginning of the year when prices were like moving above 50K that they would just kind of continue to sneak up to that 68K-ish all-time high that was established back in November 2021. Uh, and when you think about it from the whales perspectives, the ones who are essentially controlling the market, assuming you believe in that theory, which I think most should, um, you know, in order for, in order for people to get shaken out and change their opinion about mm -hmm. the happening, which after the past three ones, people are kind of universally just bullish, 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 whenever a having is occurring. So in order for people to change their tone about it, you have to see a big run up that causes FOMO and people buying at prices they shouldn't be in order for prices to then plummet and give whales the opportunity to make significant profit before the event even happens. And mm -hmm. my opinion is that most of the baking in process for the having was occurring back between like October to December when we were seeing prices skyrocket past 30 K when it was kind of stuck at that level. Um, mm -hmm. and then, you know, really start to generate hype as the, the narrative about the having started to reach the less informed people in crypto. So I, I think this was kind of a pre-planned, you know, pump and then mild shakeout to get people more hesitant about how big of a deal the having was. Yeah, I um, I agree with your wordings and how carefully you selected your words. It, it was indeed like a mild shakeout. I know from the previous cycle we have seen you know pretty severe shakeouts, uh, thirty percent, even like fifty percent back in twenty twenty one. I haven't even seen that 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 type of shakeouts uh, since. Um, November 2020, it's often, you know, 20%, 25% that would be like the the, the, the biggest shakeouts we had um, since uh, the Bitcoin ETF uh, 11th of January, we had a shakeout of 21% uh, right. or a correction of 21%, which I don't really consider as a, you know, a very severe one. And just recently uh, from the range high to the range low, that's approximately, you know, not, not even... Uh, 18 or 19 percent. Um, what what is this trend actually telling us that uh, that that the corrections are less severe, less heavy than the previous ones? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I, I think that's more a, a testament to just how large Bitcoin's market cap is now. Uh, you know, mm -hmm. even with addresses that can that can really impact the price on their own. You know, people that have say. 5k or more bitcoin and suddenly sell off their bags like that used to just single-handedly wreck bitcoin mm -hmm. and as through proxy crypto markets in general um and now the the shakeouts are a bit more minor just due to the sheer mass of different wallets that are involved in it and the more mm -hmm. um equal distribution that's going on through uh, more individuals being part of it you know it's it's much more easy if you think about it, like in terms of the stock market, it's much more easy to shake someone out of, um, uh, let's say, Tesla versus, you know, an index fund of the entire S&P 500, because mm -hmm. there's just less uh, overall market cap in one particular asset as opposed to 500 assets uh, from a, a large investment firm. So that's kind of how I see it these days. Bitcoin has kind of evolved into such a large entity that it takes something cataclysmic like Black Thursday back in 2020 to really uh, push prices down more than 25% in a given week. I think those those days are behind us for the most part. Yeah, I pretty much agree. It's basically also a statement that, um, uh, as you said, um, this space or especially a, a bitcoin as a uh, as an asset uh, um, is becoming actually more and more major and as yeah. it become more and more major the, ref the 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 corrections are less uh, less severe 
Um, you, just to circle back to um, um, to what, what you justly touched upon, uh, you know, a lot of people they were getting a little bit uh, bearish just the other day, literally, uh, because Bitcoin was at range low, uh, you know, hovering around 60k. And there was a lot of there is actually a big gap between 60k and the next actually actual uh, support level uh, based on volume profile different oscillators uh, price section and so forth and so on how how could people uh, basically utilize uh, sentiment um, and, and the apps of sentiment to um, to find early reversal signals and signs yeah, that's a great question. Um, maybe I'll use this opportunity if you don't mind. I can share my screen and show yeah. a few visual examples as I explain it. Would love to. I'm sure, people love love some visuals more than our more than our faces on screen the whole time. Even though we have pretty faces, I do agree. We with try. That. Yeah, for crypto maybe, but <laughs> I don't know about real world. Uh, let's see. So one thing I prepared was just the overall amount of people discussing the halving, right? Which is considered a bullish event. Um, and I believe that it's kind of an inverse correlation to the price where anything that's considered bullish, when you see more and more of that being mentioned, uh, it can have a negative impact on price. And right now, as you would expect with six hours to go, uh, the mentions are through the roof and Prices have kind of bounced a bit and retraced a bit back at about 64K now after uh, a pretty sizable rebound earlier today. Um, I think that when you look at, for example, something negative, uh, we'll take like a real world example like Israel or Iran. Mm -hmm. And you see the two big spikes here. Let me just zoom into the last, we'll do last month. So, the first big spike happened right after prices plummeted. A lot of people attribute the April 13th crash uh, to the announcement that Israel and Iran were uh, beginning a, a pretty notable conflict. Uh -huh. And all of a sudden people are, are mentioning it as prices are bottoming out. And then as the mentions go down, prices recover. Same thing again, prices crash and everyone starts talking about Israel and Iran this time. I don't even think that the prices did retrace due to this. I, I think it was more just like a bunch of people saying, hey, why are prices correcting? Oh, remember Israel and Iran? Oh, yeah, that makes sense. That's why. And then all of a sudden prices bounce again. So yeah. I think there's there's a lot that can be gathered by looking at traditionally bullish topics or traditionally bearish topics and using them as counter indicators to where markets are likely going to head next. Yeah, it, it does make sense. Um, I think last week with uh, the Iran-Israel uh, conflict, uh, at least th this is my interpretation, uh, the market is actually looking for a mechanism uh, to start with. And market participants, they're really good in a few things. And one of them is overreacting. If you have yep. a, a big bunch of uh, traders and investors, institutions, overreacting or de-risking then that overreaction already took place and w when another similar event happens then it's less severe because the majority already um uh overreacted already so there's no no not so many other participants left to again overreact uh on, on uh you know uh to the um on the on the same uh, level as the previous uh you know um investors that have overreacted already um do, do you have maybe another few examples uh brian uh, for us because i i really love the just you know the, the recent uh, example you just gave us about the israel iran um uh conflict sure uh and i'm pretty sure that you know there are like dozens of different uh examples where people you know starting to talk negative and then using that as a uh, counter um, uh, well a counter argument indicator yeah mm -hmm. yeah indicated to um, establish uh, new positions yeah 100% uh, this page that I'm showing here which is also part of our, our social trends dashboard which you can find just by clicking on social trends 
I'm looking at the historical crypto trends tab, the second one over. And these are some of our historically frequent mentioned topics that are always kind of getting a bit of hype, at least over the past year or so. Mm -hmm. uh, and they're the nine that we've kind of uh, put particular attention on. And the ones I'm looking at right now are mentions of bull market and mentions of bear market, right? Many people have their own definitions of what these are. And you can see just how much people have stopped believing that we're in a bull market and have started believing, especially over the past two weeks, that we're in a bear market all of a sudden. That's a good counter indicator to signify that there's a lot of people showing FUD right now, fear, uncertainty, doubt, uh, that can very often lead to shorting and shorting leading to liquidations that can boost up prices in a hurry. Uh, I wouldn't go as far as to say it's just like ultimate fear right now, especially after today's bounce. But if we start to see these mentions continue to creep up over the next few days or weeks, that would be a great sign that you're buying into everyone else's pain and fear and you're getting in at a time that is historically much more opportune than average. That That's basically my edge, buying when people don't want to buy. Uh, because whenever the market goes up, um, the, the question people should ask themselves is, who is going to sustain the trend if everyone is bullish? Yeah, people and have to sell in order for you to buy. Indeed. And when people are getting bearish, uh, th there are probably uh, entities who can sustain the, the primary trend. Um, yeah, good, good example uh, you just gave us. Yeah, hundred percent. I wanted to show off this uh, alpha narratives tab as well, which is kind of a, a breakdown of the top 20 or so topics that are getting frequent mentions throughout, you know, the previous few months or weeks. And right here, you can see there's been a, a big increase, understandably, in terms of interest about the halving. So this will this will likely die down pretty quickly after the halving occurs. Uh, you can see AI is getting some increased focus mm -hmm. uh, because I know that they've had some nice recoveries during the short-term bounce we've just seen. Uh, mentions of buy the dip. This is an important one because when you see people mentioning that it's time to buy the dip, it actually is indicative of that opportunity perhaps not being here yet. You want to be in when most people don't believe it's time to buy the dip and they're showing disinterest. Uh, yeah. And that ends up being the true bottom uh, from yeah. our studies. Th that, that's an interesting uh, f um, observation, to be honest. Um, it, it basically reminds me to the phrase, buying the dip after the dip, after the dip, right? Something yes. like that. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it does totally make sense. So this dashboard, um, everyone can have access to this or uh, this is actually yeah this one's totally free uh there's no mm. cutoff on real time or anything you oh, don't wow. even need an account um so if you want to just see some of the main mentions of mm. some of the most popular topics like even non-crypto topics are in here because yeah, there's an overlap tesla. between tesla for example and crypto traders mm. you'll see it on here because our ai tools are now generating uh you know explanations regarding these topics and um, putting the correct topics on this dashboard based on how many social mentions are out there right now. And there's mm -hmm. so many different ones you'll see on the left side of my screen. It's just jumping from topic to topic just by having me mm -hmm. hover over with the mouse and not doing any magic tricks with my button clicks or anything. Mm. That, that's really super interesting. Uh, would you say that people um, would use this as um you know, uh, as, as a confluence on top of their own system or um, oh, yeah. do you think there are even people, you know, uh, using this in isolation? Yeah, if you're bold and you want to just make your trades exclusively as like a contrarian, uh, then you can try to trade based off of social trends. Yeah. There, There's viability to doing that. But I, mm. I still recommend, you know, supplementing it with things like this, like showing... Uh, the amount being held by sharks and whales at any given time mm. and how mm. many like stable coins that are holding at any given time. This yeah. combined with the social trends and, and seeing what the, what the sheep 
essentially are doing the the main crowd that don't have big mm. weights in their portfolios being a contrarian to them while following the lead mm. of these guys that hold like between 10 to 10,000 BTC that's what we deem the mm. sharks and whales that yeah. have some actual influence that's where you'll get a lot of success if you are uh, combining mm. those two elements together yeah that, that would make a lot of sense what i have noticed from my own experience is having like a uh, contrary uh, opinion uh, going against the crowd uh, is initially very scary uh, because of the herd bias and we love tribe we, we love to be part of uh, a group and if many people are sharing like the same idea you know the the, the subconscious thought that's kind of curious well if so many people having the same opinion no way they're going to be wrong which is actually a fallacy and i found that uh going against the crowd especially at the extremes uh can pay out very uh very nicely uh is there a way to use sentiment to to uh to find the those extremes where you know basically everyone is bullish and nobody wants to um where everyone is bullish that you know leaves the thesis open of uh well Everyone is bullish, so who's going to sustain the trend? So be careful, look for the reversals. Yeah, that's a great question. A lot of people might be familiar with the fear and greed index. Uh, yeah. that's, uh, on, I can't even remember the website, but uh, we, <laughs> we definitely were inspired by them when we uh -huh. put this dashboard together, which actually shows the amount, uh, basically the scale of how bearish to how bullish <coughs> people are in relation to the top 10 most trending mm -hmm. assets uh, that are getting the highest level of discussion compared mm -hmm. to their, their normal resting state. Right mm -hmm. now, for example, Tether is being talked about a lot. Obviously, bearish to bullish sentiment doesn't matter so much with a price that's intended or a coin that's intended to always have the same price. Mm -hmm. But you can look below it at something like CRO, which is showing extreme bullishness from the crowd right now. Mm -hmm. um, and you can see the explanation as to why it's being discussed. You can see the bullish summary of it, the bearish summary of it. Mm -hmm. Go down below, we've got Wizard, we've got Near, JTO, uh -huh. Ton. I'm actually surprised to see Bitcoin not on here because it has been consistently way above its normal discussion rate leading up to the halving. Uh, mm -hmm. But regardless, you'll be able to see the bearish to bullish range just using these meters. Or more technically, you can go to any asset by clicking on the chart tab here. In this case, I've got Bitcoin highlighted, which is going to be highlighted by default the first time you reach the chart page. And we've got a few key social indicators. Uh, one is called weighted sentiment right here. Mm -hmm. And what this does is it measures the overall social volume of any uh discussions related to Bitcoin, and it's combining that social volume with the ratio between positive commentary and negative commentary related to it on Twitter and Reddit, Telegram, uh, um, Bitcoin Talk, and 4chan. Those are the five platforms we're pulling from. Uh, so any mentions of Bitcoin are factored in, and then we have an algorithm that's measuring whether that comment is extremely positive to neutral to extremely bearish or anything in between that. Mm -hmm. uh, and that gives us a pretty good idea of when tops are going to form. For example, here, the first week of January, we had already been on a big run up. We see this huge euphoric spike and then yeah. all of a sudden we drop down. Then once yeah. we drop down, we start seeing negativity and then we blast off a little more negativity here as prices start to flat, flatten out and then blast off again until they get euphoric right around the all-time high. I'm actually surprised there wasn't more euphoria. And then we see the retrace, negativity, mm -hmm. another bounce, more negativity. And we've kind of been chopping ever since. And right now, this is a small sample size, but mm -hmm. there is some signs that we're, we're seeing a bit of euphoria again due to the past 24 hours of bouncing. Ah, uh, do you think uh, it's also related to the halving event? A hundred percent. Yeah. And you can look at social volume, for example, and you see that the blue here is just the overall level of discussion, which is pretty neutral for today. 
but the ratio of discussion, this is social dominance. This is measuring the percentage of discussion related to Bitcoin versus all asset discussion. And right oh, now yeah. it's uh, close to 27%. I've found that it usually hovers around like 20 to 22%. So yeah, the amount of eyes on Bitcoin is predictably higher than usual considering the big having event that's about to commence. Mm -hmm. Could you please go to the previous chart with uh, the price action and you know the, the the yeah indeed with with the red lines? Sure. Yeah, just just to share my thoughts on that. Uh, so on on the day of ETF when the ETFs were um, publicly uh, tradable, we got this uh, you know pretty good dip of uh, I think it was twenty one point five percent something like that. I, I think my thesis was that there was indeed a lot of euphoria. But also towards the uh, spot ETF, there was a lot of euphoria from a lot of market participants six months ago already. So the, the hype was pretty strong in the narrative of the ETF. But on the day of the ETF, the hype and uh, you know basically died out because you know on the day of the ETF, there, there there's no uh, you know the narrative is there, so th there's nothing more to talk about. Hence the you know yep. the, the big the big dip we have seen so uh, you know from from that perspective i would say the the etf was a uh kind of priced in as in the hype was priced in mm -hmm. but the real megan like the, the real you know um the, the the real etf as in uh big asset managers buying uh crypto for their clients wasn't priced in and that the that you know, normally it takes time. In right. this case, it took uh, what was it, like you know a few weeks before we saw like a uh, continuation of of the uptrend. My thesis for now is, and I subscribe to the idea that the hype of the halving is um, kind of priced in. Of course, like the real mechanism of the halving is not priced in because that's just impossible. Uh, at at the moment, each block at, gets a reward of six point two five. Uh, starting from uh, I don't know uh, thirty, what is now thirty-five blocks away from now, the the the, the mining reward would be you know three point one two five, and it takes normally a lot of time before we actually feel that that shock in supply. Uh, probably a lot of weeks. I can remember from the last halving, it we we needed uh, you know one hundred fifty days of consolidation before Bitcoin resumed to the upside, uh, meaning. Uh, the, the the halving at that time, you know, uh, was actually priced in. I mean, the hype of the uh, of of the halving, uh, and only after the halving, uh, it, it it just took you know a long period of consolidation, uh, almost half a year before we, before we saw like you know uh, uh, price action going to the uh, to the upside. Do you think this time will be different? uh from from an uh you know from from the tools you have available from an on-chain and sentiment perspective that most that um meaning uh, just let me uh rephrase my question do you think that the halving uh is uh, more a binary event or non-binary event non-binary event as in it's going to take some time before we actually feel the effect of the halving, and yeah. um, that you know the, the 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 upside price action was mostly induced by the uh, by by people looking forward to the halving, uh, meaning uh, it's another uh, buy the rumor, sell the news event until mm -hmm. you know uh, 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 until you know a few four or five uh, weeks and months before we uh, before we actually feel the halving. Yeah, I think you articulated everything very well there. Uh, my, you took the words out of my mouth because I I, I think both events, uh, the halving which is about to unfold and and the ETF back in mid January, uh, they were by the rumor sell the news types of events. The mm. difference is. The ETF, we didn't know what day it was finally going to be uh, concluded and, uh -huh. and confirmed here in the U.S. We just knew that we were getting close. Uh, if yeah. you remember Coin Telegraph, which we respect very much, <laughs> the intern, they, yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah, they had like what about two weeks beforehand, somewhere around here, they yeah. accidentally, you know, pre pre. Uh, reported some news that hadn't been confirmed yet. And then everyone got very upset. We got a little bit of a bounce anyways, as a result of that. 
and then we finally got a confirmation, but we didn't know when it would be. It wasn't quite a foregone conclusion the way the having was. That's why I think the buildup, even going back to October, before even the ETF happened, it was mostly due to the having with optimism kind of being supplemented because of the ETF that most people thought were inevitable. They just didn't know when it would happen. I like to look at the having as more equivalent to the Ethereum merge that happened back in September of 2022. Um, and I could even bring it up really quick on our charts because what we saw was kind of a, a more minor buildup of price heading into uh, September of 2022. Uh, let's see if I go to September 22, we'll say between June and October, uh, we'll say December of 22. All right, so if I go down to weighted sentiment here, you can see exactly when the, actually, sorry, it was on September 15th or 16th, depending on your time zone. So we saw an initial buildup, right? Uh, this is when everyone started talking about the merge and how Ethereum mm -hmm. was going to be more efficient and all of this stuff. And mm -hmm. yeah. um, you need to get in now. And then all of a sudden we see a big drop. There's a little uncertainty. This was like the final buildup, kind of equivalent to like that mid-March all-time high that we saw with Bitcoin. That was what we saw here. But then the week before, we see this big letdown. And by the time the merge happens and the news is confirmed because we already knew it was going to happen at this time, uh, even though there's a bunch of euphoria right here, this was the, the most euphoria we had seen toward Ethereum oh, wow. in over a year. It just completely uh, deflated everybody when the event happened because everyone had been buying right here and right here. So all of a sudden we get a bunch of negativity right after because everyone's like, oh, I can't believe I was fooled by the merge being a big deal. Mm -hmm. I shouldn't have listened to all the hype. Mm -hmm. And they're selling off saying, oh, I got ripped off. And then all of a sudden we, we start to see it rise again. Uh, and then, of course, Sam Bakeman fried made an appearance right here and uh -huh. ruined everything. But I do believe this part was all pretty uh, indicative of how these events typically go. If the yeah. crowd gets too hyped about something when it's already a foregone conclusion, then it's already too late to be euphoric here. This was the initial buildup that most people were getting mm -hmm. in on. Uh, and then the actual event is underwhelming people get upset afterwards and i kind of predict that's what's going to happen here we may see something different but if prices stay low just for the next 24 hours or so going into the weekend we'll probably see a lot of negative sentiment people saying ah oh, the having you know was never as big of a deal as people were making it <laughs> yeah. and then all of a sudden we see a big bounce yeah, beautiful explanation, by the way, Merch. I was myself very disappointed, not because yeah. I was trading Ethereum. I do have Ethereum as a long-term uh, uh, hodl, um, but it's just because even after the merge and even after many upgrades, uh, the, the 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 gas fees were still extremely expensive. Right. Uh, uh, until quite recently, the it's now pretty cheap again. Uh, we not, just made a post not, about that coincidentally uh, yesterday oh, yeah. we put out this this post saying that uh fees on average on the ethereum network that's for all erc20s not just ethereum itself yeah they're down course. to two dollars and seven cents yeah. um that's, that's, which is a far a cry from 15 where it yeah. was at at the in early march so it's yeah, at least I, looking better yeah indeed i, I can remember like a few months ago i was uh, paying 100 dollars for a stupid swap so, yeah uh, happy that um things are now a little bit cheaper getting there yeah yeah people hey, still Brian. complain about it and a lot of oh, people yeah. talk about solana as a um comparison because it's cheaper and many see yeah. more efficient i don't get into those debates but i do know that there's still a criticism over ethereum's uh yeah. speed and cost at times yeah yeah i i, I definitely agree with that
Uh, Ryan, you're using a lot of you know beautiful tools like on-chain data and sentiment. Um, you know, when, when you combine these two and and you know in your discretionary um, um, uh, vision of of uh, crypto and mainly Bitcoin, where do you see Bitcoin heading to uh, in in this bull cycle? Yeah, I mean that's a, a tough question, right? I, I certainly am not a a uh, fortune teller when it comes to this stuff. What what we typically do is we look at the current conditions based on what the indicators are telling us. We have metrics that give alpha for the short and midterm, but mm. whales and the crowds kind of emotions can change things at the snap of a finger. So even calling our shot like more than a month out uh, mm. is, is usually disingenuous, which is why we don't typically do it. Uh, my opinion is, we still need to see some better uh, some better things from the long-term perspective. I'm still on 2022 now, but if we go to real time and we load MVRV, which is one of my favorite metrics, this shows the average returns of wallets that have been active over the past 30 days in orange and the past 365 days here in teal. And generally prices bounce most prominently when both of these lines are below the zero axis. Right now we've got the short and midterm part, uh, that box is checked, but the long term, you can still see that the average trader combining any wallet that's been active in the past year, they're up about 32% on their money. Mm -hmm. And that means there's increased risk if you were to add on to your position right now uh, with the intention of, of investing long term, you'd be doing so while the average trader in a zero sum game is already up significantly. So I think there needs to be either a resting period where Bitcoin kind of chills mm -hmm. in the 60 ish K level for a while, or I know people don't want to hear it, but there could be a retrace just to get this MVRV line back to zero or even below zero for the first time in, I think, over a year. Oh, wow. Yeah, yeah. it's been a long time because there's just been such a, a big run up. You can see even, even in September of 2023, when we were at like 25K, the yearly returns on average were still above 0%. So mm -hmm. I think we'd have to go back to the, the FTX collapse to find a time in which the long-term traders were were underwater. Yeah, I think your first scenario pretty much aligns with uh, the third halving, uh, when at, at, at the um, it, it took us 150 days after the third halving, like uh, right. 150 days of consolidation. It was pretty narrow, actually. Uh, I think if I can recall, it was a range of 20, 25 percent ish, something like that, to, uh, before it uh, really took off to the uh, to the upside. And you do you remember what the exact date was, by any chance? Uh, well, if everything the the exact date of the third halving was eleventh uh, of May. Okay, so it was a couple months after COVID was really kicking in. Yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. So if we look at. I, I want to check it out because I think that's a great point you brought up. If we just look at April to June of 2020, 2020 and we look at the price. Uh, so yeah, it was starting to recover a ton about a month after Black Thursday happened in mid to late April. And then you said May, what was the exact date again? Sorry. 11th of May. 11th. So the album was okay. 11th of May, yeah. Then so yeah, was... look at that. Like right before the halving, we saw something similar from the 7th to mm -hmm. the 11th. Bitcoin retraced about 13.5% or so. And then the halving happened. We saw a little bit of a run up and then kind of a cool up period. Yeah. Which was and it went... wasn't yeah. immediate. It, I mean, this is really not, not too significant of growth. And we didn't really see things kick in until a few months later, right? Yeah. Yeah, like here in July is when it happened. So if we're basing it on on the most previous having, which should be the most relevant, then 
we may be looking at like a two to three month, maybe even longer delay before we see the effects of the increased mining difficulty uh, that mm -hmm. Bitcoin's going to see now. Yeah, yeah that, that, that's an interesting thesis. I, I subscribe myself to that thesis. It brings also a lot of um, positivities. Uh, it resets oscillators. It, it, it creates a lot of uh, impatience among uh, traders. And I love when people are getting impatient and fearful. Mm -hmm. Um, and it just makes sense if, if, if there is some, some form of consolidation after, uh, you know, strong upside, um, I mean, you know, since the local bottom, uh, or the, like the, the cycle bottom, Bitcoin did 373%. I rather prefer Bitcoin doing some, you know, forming a base for another two months or so, uh, rather than quickly going to the, uh, to, to the, uh, to the upside. Good point. Yeah, but Brian, you, you shared so much alpha with us. Um, ladies and gentlemen, um, make sure to follow sentiment. You spell sentiment with a A, not with a yep. E. I'm gonna quickly write down the name here in the in, in the chat so they know uh, who to follow. Yeah, uh, if you Google sentiment and misspell us, you'll probably just find some love poems on Google instead. I don't think uh, by the way, is there any um, uh, linguistic reason uh, why you guys call it like sentiment? Is there like a um, background story behind it? Yeah, our founder can give a better explanation than me, uh, but we, we basically wanted to make it clear that we are a platform that not only offers the on-chain side of things, but we're very much tapped into the psychology behind crypto and how the irrational behavior and emotions and uh sentiment driven feelings about it really drive mm -hmm. markets more than anything else so it's it's just a simple play on words yeah I, I love it and i fully agree ladies and gentlemen hit the like button for brian from sentiment if you're on youtube hit the like button if you are watching this on twitter hit the like button and retweet let us know what you have learned and again, follow Sentiment. You can check out the, the, the website at sentiment.net. Some of these tools are for free. Some of them come with a price. I would say, you know, try it out. Try it out the first, you know, the free version. And then if you like it, you can, of course, you know, uh, broaden your horizon with, uh, with, a, with a paid version. Uh, yeah, Brian, everyone, everyone who makes yeah. an account, by the way, they get a free week, whether they want to get a paid version or just try it out. Oh, wow. Um, yeah. And if you use, we still have the code CryptoBurb active, by the way. So put that in at all caps at checkout and you'll get 25% off whatever amount of months you'd like to purchase uh, with your first order. So that's our deal that we've had in, um, in the system for about two, three years since we first started making videos together. That's a generous deal. Thank you so much, uh, Brian, for uh, providing and offering this deal. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, uh, we are probably 35 blocks away from the halving, or maybe now 34 blocks. We also have a halving Thank event. Yep. Yeah, we have like a halving event. Uh, you guys can get a um, discount on many of our uh, uh, plans. You can get the inclusive Next Club and the Burbicator Pro, which is Adrian's Crypto Burps uh, standalone trading system for $99. I would say check that out. Brian, again, thank you so much for sharing the alpha. Ladies and gentlemen, thank you so much for tuning in. Until the next time, see you around, ladies and gentlemen. Bye-bye. Thank you, guys. Take care, Jimmy. Bye.